Hey, I'm Eric from Alabama. And I'm Jerry in Boston. We want to welcome our listeners from the United States and around the world. It's another Sunday podcast. Eric, how much do you put into this artificial intelligence? How much stock do you give that? You know, the whole big brother thing. Well, what do you mean what stock? Do well, like it, do do you believe do you believe um in in this so, so let me let me kind of put some context behind that. So on a, a few episodes ago, we talked about whether and weather phenomena and things like that. And, and we get talking about um, this particular earthquake that I was in, a specific earthquake that I was in in Los Angeles. And now when I go out to YouTube, just random, I have not searched for any information on this earthquake. I'm getting suggested videos to watch of this specific earthquake. Now, I don't believe in coincidences. This is spooky. Yeah. And see, that's, yeah, I don't like it either. <laughs> yeah, I think it is spooky. So I I know that's happened a lot, even like, the, well, the other day I was singing a song. And sure enough, the song showed up on YouTube when I went to YouTube. So I actually went to look it up, but there the song popped up in those videos that it um that it pulls up right as you go to the youtube page it showed right up so i didn't even have to type anything in hold me i'm scared yeah (laughs) (laughs) i mean i understand when you like if you're watching a, a a video or something or somebody and it makes these suggestions you know i know that cookie than a computer if you're out at a website and maybe you're looking up podcasting for example and then you go to a news website and the commercial comes up and the banner on the website you know podcasting or whatever I get that but I did not search for this particular earthquake in, in Los Angeles and I was getting suggestions from that so I just and again I don't believe in coincidences so do 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 yeah, do 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 I could I could go into a whole thing about my philosophy on technology, but but I I don't <laughs> I don't know if I want to bore you with that. <laughs> well, what about like a high level? I know I know I know we've talked about you know artificial intelligence before, and to some extent, it's good. I see it in some of the things I do for work, and it can be helpful. Uh, but this is I yeah. just find well, this any- interesting. Anything that's powerful like that can be used to for good and it can be used for bad. So, and the more potential it has for good, I think the more potential it also has for bad. But I mean, I don't know. People say that we, you know, have conquered nature through technology. And I don't know if that's necessarily entirely true, but I was reading a book by C.S. Lewis, and he was talking about how the airplane does not negate the law of nature. We haven't, like, conquered the law of nature. Um, The law of gravity still exists, but the airplane uses the law of lift to pull it up off the ground, you know, But but as soon as the airplane's engines go out, the law of gravity is still there, you know. So, and it also, I don't know, I think that was just a <laughs> a quick going off the rails. But I think we have, for the sake of convenience, allowed types of technology in our lives that, that invade our privacy. And we've given a lot of our autonomy over to these technology groups or, and companies and to the technology itself 
we've I think we've given a lot of our autonomy over um, for convenience and for the ability to use those tools. And th they're great tools like like Zoom, like this computer and the uh, that I'm using to talk to you right now. That's pretty awesome that we can do this podcast when I'm in Alabama and you're in Boston. So, but at the same time, you know, there's probably artificial intelligence, like listening <laughs> to everything we say. So, and they certainly, they certainly, they certainly heard about the earthquake. I, I, I think. Yeah. Uh, no, I, well, I, I agree. You know, when you look at, and I, and I came up, I'm, I'm a bit older than you. So when I came up in, in, in the world as a youngster. I can remember when video games came onto the scene. And I don't mean, I don't even know what they call them today, if they're still called video games. You know, this, the things you go into like a GameStop or whatever, and then they have these huge uh, groups that everybody's kind of playing against each other and stuff. We didn't have that. When I was younger, we found ourselves spending a lot more time outdoors playing softball or playing kickball in the street or something. And then as video games came on, we found ourselves in the house more, right? But now, I mean, there's some great things, like you said, about technology. The fact that we're talking right now is awesome. Yeah. But you wonder how far it goes and to what, right. ex and to what extent. I mean, there's some great technology that protects our country that's you know that's all necessary stuff. I'm not talking about that stuff. It's just again, I, I just I just happen to pop into YouTube and see this these videos, these news stories about this specific, not about earthquakes in general, but these this specific earthquake as a suggested video. And I'm like, I don't recall searching for that. And I, and I know when I looked at my search history, it wasn't there. So again, coincidence? I don't know. Yeah. So we uh, recently got uh, some text messages and an email from some listeners regarding your well-being um, because about a week ago, I think it was a week ago from when we're recording this, there was a, a number of tornadoes that went through the state of Alabama. So people were texting, how's Eric? Is Eric okay? You know, they heard Birmingham. They heard um, Alabama and tornadoes and the damage and stuff like that. Um, so we appreciate our listeners for checking in on, uh, on you. Um, yes. So thank you for, thank you for your concern. So you and I were kind of going back and forth, uh, texting and watching the local, uh, news. I was watching, um, uh, Mr. S uh, Span, Span, Sam, what's his name? James Span. Span. Uh, on, uh, I was watching him through the computer. Obviously you were watching him, you know, in, in Alabama. Nobody was, there were no injuries or any deaths, right? In that little string of storms? Uh, not that I know of. So I know it, uh, took out some houses. Um, I think it leveled some houses, but as far as I know, nobody was, um, was Did any killed. And then how close to you was that? Uh, it was in the county south of us. We, and we didn't have anything here. It was, it, it just drizzled. Uh, and then the star, uh, clouds got a little dark, but other than some drizzle, that was it. Which is, is kind of weird or whatever, but they let the schools out early. Um, that day. And, and that's the thing you never know, like with stuff like that. Um, in fact, there was a, we were under a warning for a little while cause there was a rotation that looked like it was going to come right up through our way. And then, uh, it just went away. So I remember when we were talking that I think you get you, your, your specific town, uh, ended up in the, uh, the polygon, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So that was a little concerning and. Uh, luckily, again, nobody was injured. Unfortunately, people lost homes, and but no, no deaths were reported. But 
that can be kind of um in fact one of our one of the folks that texted me said you must you must not be used to that or it must be frightening it and and you have a different take on that yeah well we we've grown up with it so it's you know it's just part of living down here like tromping through the woods and finding a rattlesnake or something you know um it's just something that you i'm not going to say it's not a big deal because it is but you just you get used to it adapt to it you don't have a lot of control over it and very little time to prepare right i mean no normally you're, you're kind of pre-prepared right whether you have a cellar or a storm shelter or something and you kind of know that like today is going to be one of those days it could but once you get the warning it's only a matter of minutes right before it could literally be on top of you uh yeah and they have um usually every community has a, a place that opens up when that when something like that happens like when the schools are letting out and everything it, um like in the town i'm in the church has a has a uh, block basement and so um they'll you know they'll open it up as a tornado shelter for people who don't have a good place to stay or whatever so um so but yeah there's places you can go and and things you can do so but and you just you know you kind of uh try to stay prepared if anything comes up so but it can it can come up quick and and you know they're usually the tornadoes it's like they're there and then they blow right through and then it you know then it's done so do most people have a weather uh, weather radio? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I, I don't, and my parents don't. Um, but we would always watch James Spann on the TV, so um, and, and and that worked pretty good. And and you said when James Spann takes off his tie, you're in trouble. Uh, well, yeah, he um, yeah, he always has the suspenders and everything or whatever, and um but yeah uh, if he if he takes his tie off then then that's when it's getting serious so you kind of know by by the state of undress in which james Spann is is then how serious the situation is so i know the joke um is that if you see jim cantori from the weather channel roll into your town get out <laughs> <laughs> because they he, they only send him to to places that are going to get buried with snow or there's going to be a tornado outbreak or whatever. So yeah, that was always the uh, the thing. It's like I always want to meet Jim Cantori and somebody's like, if he comes to your town, you just better get out because something <laughs> bad's going to happen. So, he's he's great too. Um, if you've ever seen uh, the Weather Channel and Jim Cantori, New England guy, I believe he's from Connecticut. Anyway, we're glad you're good and you're okay and. And uh, it is that time of season, right? I mean, or is this is this about March, April? Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, the one that a lot of people remember is the uh, oh, was it April twenty seventh? It was the April storms. I want to say it was twenty eleven um, that ripped through Tuscaloosa, and it did a lot of damage. Um, and. Uh, the National Guard got called out. Um, I didn't have to go, but they called the guard out, and uh, and it, it was a bad storm. So nature takes its uh, does does its own thing, you know. Like you said, the plane uses physics to get off the ground, but gravity takes over. You know, nature. I mm -hmm. guess if that's even nature. Well, again, we're glad you're we're glad you're safe and and. Uh, there was no major damage, and hopefully there won't be a there won't be a year like twenty eleven. Yeah, and thank you to all of the listeners who were checking in on me. I appreciate that. We have some great listeners out there. What a, and what a perfect segue! On March twenty first, our episode dropped where we had 
asked our listeners if they knew where the origin of break a leg. I think you asked the question, where did that come from? And we asked our listeners if anyone knows to respond, and they did. So I have a couple uh, that I'll read to you here. Rick from Boston sent uh, this in. It says, in Elizabethan times... The audience would move their chairs up and down to make noise to show appreciation for the performance. Occasionally, a chair leg would break because the appreciation was so enthusiastic. Hence, break a leg. Hmm. And we did. We got a couple of um, a couple of emails from folks with that essentially that that definition there. Another listener, uh, Kevin from New York City, sent in this tidbit of information essentially was what I just read, but he also added professional dancers do not wish each other good luck by saying break a leg. Instead, they say merde, the French word for shit. (laughs) In turn, theater people now have picked up this usage as a wish, as they wish each other merde, either alone or in a combination with break a leg. In Spanish, the phrase is merda, or lots of shit. In Portuguese, it's muta merda that has the same meaning. And this goes back to when the the days of horse and carriages, when they would take audiences to the theater. And if you looked down on the street and you saw a bunch of horse dung, it would mean that a lot of people went to that show. (laughs) So it was a (laughs) successful show. So thank you, Kevin, in New York City, for that. (laughs) <laughs> a tidbit of uh, of uh, break a leg, and my apologies to uh, anyone who speaks French or Spanish or uh, Portuguese for anything I may have mispronounced. But that was great. And one one other email that we got, uh, you had mentioned John Wilkes Booth, and said, "I know it's not John Wilkes Booth, uh, but he broke his leg and had a different outcome." Well, somebody sent us this. Uh, this is from Brendan in uh, Denver, Colorado. Sent us. Alluding to John Wilkes Booth, one popular but false etymology derives the phrase from the 1865 assassination of Abraham Lincoln, during which John Wilkes Booth, the actor turned assassin, claimed in his diary that he broke his leg leaping to the stage of Ford's theater after murdering the president. The fact that actors did not start wishing each other to break a leg as early as the 1920s, more than 50 years later, would make this an unlikely source. Furthermore, Booth often exaggerated and falsified his diary entries to make them more dramatic. Uh. <laughs> so thank you, Brendan. Denver, Colorado, for that for that email. So cool. they so there you go. Our listeners are, are listening and responding. Yeah, that's good. A lot of information there. There's one other uh I found I found this um online that refers to uh, actors getting paid. And it was somewhat about, I guess it was an, an imaginary line on the stage that if passengers, it was called like a leg line. It had something to do with the theater drapes and, and uh, stage curtains and things like that. And an unpaid performer or, or, or like a standby performer or um, what do they call the... Um, the uh, the person that fills in the understudy was to cross the line or break, quote, break the line. They would get paid. So people would say to them, break a leg. Okay. So several, yeah, several different definitions on on where the origin comes from. That's interesting. We have very knowledgeable listeners out there. Very, yes, we do. Very yeah. smart people. Why are you listening to us? No, we're yeah. really happy. <laughs> we're really happy that you are listening to us and, re- and responding. So we might even do a trivia show, and maybe if we put our yeah. pen- put our pennies together, maybe we can offer a little prize to to some listener in, the, in a future episode. Huh? Well, that's going to take us to the end of this episode. Again, we're trying to keep them 25, 30 minutes so that folks can listen to this uh, at their convenience and all in one sitting or one drive. More suggestions that have come in from listeners from time to time. Obviously, you know, we've got a guest or something or we've got an interesting topic and we just don't want to edit the, you know, any good content out. So 
Not that this isn't good content, but you know what I mean. So why don't we wrap up this episode, um, episode number 19, as we cross into, uh, into the month of April. Spring is in bloom and everything else. And uh, pick it up on episode 20. It sounds good. All right. Well, thank you once again to everybody who is listening to us and for your comments. And again, if you'd like to be on the show or you know somebody that would be an interesting guest, send us an email. It's another Sunday podcast at gmail.com. Eric, last word to you. Roll with the changes. It's another Sunday podcast. It's produced by Eric and Jerry. Technical advisor, Tom Billadu. Music composed and performed by Tom Blaze. Check out Tom Blaze's YouTube channel. That's going to do it for another episode of It's Another Sunday Podcast. Thanks for listening.